I've always liked the idea of game boards, but the idea of building a 4 foot square table with fixed terrain seemed a bit indulgent to me. Never mind the full sized 8x6 table. I mean, I couldn't possibly make more than one because where would I even put that? Then I started playing Force of Virtue, where you can run a game on a 2x2 foot table. So I figured that would be more manageable. Right? I wanted to be able to take this board with me to run some uh, demo games. So I knew I'd need to make it rather sturdy. Foam on its own will be fine if you're just going to use it in one place and you can just skip ahead to the board build itself. However, it can get chewed up very easily if you're carting it around, so I went for a simple wooden frame. For the sides, I used some 8cm wide boards, cut to length. Since the foam I'm using is 5cm thick, this will give me some clearance to add a hanger for storage. I also wanted one side of the board to be elevated, so I cut slopes into a pair of 5cm boards, and I used another 5cm board to build up one side. This way the foam will be fully enclosed. I enjoy making dovetail joints, so I cut some pins into the ends of two of the boards and the tails in the other two. If you don't want to mess around with joinery, you can also use a butt joint here, as we're going to be reinforcing it in a second anyway. If you do use dovetails though, make sure that you mark which sides go together. Once everything was cut out, I glued it up and let it cure. To help support the foam and the structure of the frame, I added a block to each corner flush with the bottom. Each block is 2.7cm tall, which leaves enough space for a 3mm plywood bottom and the 5cm block of foam. If you went for butt joints earlier, you can also add some uh, screws in these blocks to strengthen the assembly, but for dovetails it's really not necessary. Next I did a French cleat to one side. This is just a piece of wood cut at a 45 degree angle that will slot into another piece of wood that is fixed to a wall. I have a pair of cleats left over from a failed shelving project, so this solves the problem of where to store a 2x2 foot gaming board for me. This arrangement can take a lot of weight, and the surface area means that you don't need to fiddle around to engage a nail or a hook. After a test, I glued in the bottom of the board, and added another piece of wood across the bottom, to prevent sagging. Now, you may have noticed that I said that I enjoy cutting dovetails, not that I'm good at cutting dovetails, so the corners needed a lot of cleaning up. I spread wood filler on the corners, and let's just say this stuff is strong. I made the mistake of using it inside, and in a few minutes I was more stoned than an Old Testament adulteress. If you're using something like this, make sure you use it outside, and possibly use a respirator. Once the unicorns and fairies left, I started sending the filler. It's easiest to send towards the corner on one side, and then do the same on the other corner. You may need to switch between sides a couple of times, but you should be left with a nice clean edge. To finish off the frame, I sprayed it black and varnished it, then added some furniture pads to the feet. This will prevent the board from scratching your table or sliding around while you're using it. It takes seconds, but it's a very useful addition, I think. Next up, I glued in the foam to the bottom of the frame. I didn't have a large enough piece to flit completely, but that's okay as the seam is going to be covered over anyway. You may notice that I left an area of the base clear of glue. We'll come to that later. To make the elevation, I cut a piece of foam that was a little larger than the sloped area, and used the frame as a template to mark out where the edge of the frame is. Then I used the hot wire cutter to rough cut the slope. Here I was only aiming to remove most of the material, not to get to the marked line exactly, as I would be shaping it down in place later. For now the goal was to have a nice random face. With that done, I put the slope in place. I didn't glue it down yet, but rubbed away at the edge near the frame. Expanded polystyrene breaks down very easily, and rubbing it is a great way to shape it down to an organic shape. Now that the bulk of the board was laid out, I took some time to work out what I wanted to go with. This would let me work out what it would look like before I started to glue things down, figure out whether there was enough space or whether some areas would be too plain. Take a few minutes, it saves a lot of trouble down the line. I wanted a stairway going up the slope, so I went back to the hot wire cutter and cut out the area I'd marked out for them. You don't need to be super precise, but the straighter the cut is, the less corrections you have to do later, so go slow and take your time. To make the body of the stairs, I glued a series of 5mm thick pieces of XPS foam, staggered at 2cm intervals. I used the chunk I'd cut out from the slope to uh, get the length and slice them down to size. Since I was planning to cover these in 5mm tiles, I made these stairs slightly lower than the full height, so the top of the tiles would line up with the 2mm tiles on the plateau. 
Of course, once I glued it in, I decided I didn't like how the area between the top of the stairs and the paving looked. So I cut in space for an extra step and glued another one in. For the paving, I cut up a whole lot of XPS tiles. 1.5 cm squared and 2 mm thick. I needed a lot of these, but the hot wire cutter made short work of it. On the other hand, laying the tiles took forever, but it's not difficult and it was quite relaxing. When you're doing this, just remember to leave some space between the tiles. I lost some footage here when I was doing the stairs and the road, but they're done in much the same way, just using different size bricks. When doing the edges, don't sweat it. Just overshoot the edge and come back in with a blade later to trim them down. This is much faster and cleaner than trying to cut the tiles beforehand and fitting them in like a jigsaw puzzle. The slopes were looking a bit bare at this point, so I made some rocks to spice them up. I started out with some aluminum foil, which I folded up to four layers and crumpled up. Don't crush it tight because you need to unfold it again, as we're going to use it as a mold. Now, you can use plaster here, but I went with polyfiller and a little more water than the recommended amount. Just pour it in and give it a good shake to help the air bubbles come out. Once it's set, you can pull it out of the foil. Don't worry about getting it out in one piece, these chunks are exactly what we want. Next, I mixed up some modeling compound. You can use Sculpta Mold or Geek Gaming Scenics, though I used my bootleg version made of paper pulp and uh, polyfiller. You can see how I made this in my Weirwood 3 video if you're interested. Spread the glue over the slopes, and then press the chunks in. The compound will hold them in place once it dries, so you don't need any glue. Add in some more compound to fill in the gaps and uh, overhangs, and you're good to go. At this point, I let everything sit for 4 months, which I assure you is not a necessary step. Partly it was because I was unusually busy with work, partly because the weather was stupidly hot, but mostly because there were a couple of things in the build I wasn't sure how I was going to make, which led me to procrastinate. So I'd like to take a second to thank my viewers for their patience, especially my patrons Patrick Walter, Quest Borterain, Dungeon Matron, Lawrence Davies, Michael Patterson, Tina Martins, and CryptoCav. Thank you all for hanging around. Hopefully, now it's cool enough for the brain hamster to spin its wheel, content will be a bit more frequent. Finally, I decided to get on with uh, what I knew how to do and figure out the rest along the way. I needed a couple of ruins for the south side of the board, and those seemed like a good place to start. I started off the small ruined wall with a strip of paper and covered it with glue. Then I glued XPS foam bricks down one side. I used 10 by 5 by 5 mm bricks and added in a 5x5x5mm brick every 4 or 5 bricks. Then I turned it over and built up the other side in the same way. Once that was sorted, I added another row of bricks on top to hide the paper core. This time I didn't use the 5x5x5 bricks, I just put a 10x5x5 across the wall instead. After I added a few extra bricks on top to make it look ruined, I made another short wall section in the same way and linked them up together. I thought it looked better parallel to the uh, road than where I had originally meant for it to be, so I glued it there, and added some paving tiles behind it to make it look like the floor of a building. The second ruin was built up in the same way, but I used card as a core instead of paper because it's a bit taller. To make the internal corner, I pre-built the wall, and then built a staggered wall right up to where I wanted it to be before slotting it in. Then I could continue building the main wall from there. To make the pillars, I use the Shifting Lens Circle Cutting Jig on my hot wire cutter. Now, if the wire on the cutter is at a perfect 90 degree angle to the table, you're going to get a cylinder. But if you angle it slightly, it is going to give you a nice taper. To make the flutes, I held the pillar near the hot wire for a few seconds before backing it off and uh, turning it a few degrees each time. It takes a little consistency. The angle you turn it determines the spacing of the flutes and the time you leave it near the wire determines how deep the flute will be. The pedestal is a lot more straightforward. I started off with a 3cm cube of XPS foam and cut off 2mm of the top and bottom. I cut bevels on these by running them through the hot wire at an angle. You could use a jig here, but it's not difficult to do it by hand. 
Next, I started to slice down the rest of the block so it would fit on the flat parts. I found it's easiest to uh, creep up on it by slicing about 1mm at a time from adjacent sides until it fits. Once it does, glue everything together and you have pillars. I wanted the large drawing to have an exposed underground section, kind of like a cellar, so I hacked and scraped away part of the foam. This is where I left the uh, glue off earlier. I left it in because I thought a collapsed area would look better than a completely dig up area. Now, bricking in such a small space would be pretty miserable, so instead I glued up the bricks to a piece of card and then glued that into the hole. To work well, it was easy, so I have no idea why I did the other two walls directly in there. I am not a smart person. With the bricks in place, I covered the ramp with polyfiller and filled in random gaps here and there. Now I could put down the flooring in this room too and get everything ready for painting. I primed everything with my usual mix of black paint and PVA. This goes on grey but it dries a patchy black. I like this because it creates a lot of color variation. I made sure all the exposed foam surfaces got a coat, as this will protect it from the propellant in the spray varnishes I use. You don't need to coat the polyfiller, but it's easier to just go over everything. Once the primer was dry, I base coated all the stone parts with rose henna. Again, I didn't try to go for an even coverage, as the variations will show up in the end and give us some variety without any effort. The only places I did make an effort to get a full coat was on the pillars, because those have a lot less texture than everything else, so they work a little differently. Now, the next step was mostly useless since it got almost completely obliterated later, but I'm leaving this in as some people might like the look. I just overbrushed all the rosiana with a couple of layers of carnation pink. Pay special attention to the pillars because this is all the paintwork they're going to get. After that, I dropped a couple of layers of varnish on everything and mixed up some polyfiller. I put filler over the tiles and bricks, using a wet brush to spread it more easily. Mostly, you want to make sure it gets into the gaps. Then, I used a wet rag to wipe as much of it as I could off the top, leaving it only in the gaps. You're still going to have a lot stuck to the top, but don't worry, it adds a lot of color and texture. Just make sure you don't have any large blobs and wipe any spill that gets on the sides of the frame. Once the filler was dry, the stone was looking rather pale and boring, so I went in with a rosy and a dry brush. This brings the color out again, making the surface look a whole lot more interesting with very little effort. Next, I base coated the rock faces with a light grey and put down another layer of varnish. Painting the rocks takes some time, but it's uh, very easy. I just started dropping washes on it, waiting for the wash to dry, then adding another wash. Mostly different shades of brown. Starting from the darkest, I went through Mars brown, burnt sienna, rose sienna and yellow ochre. Finally, I went over it with a very thin wash of paints grey. As I applied the paints grey wash, I kept a paper towel at hand and tapped the surface with it now and again. This makes sure that the wash only stays in the deeper detail. It's also useful to soak up any spill as this can stain the mortar on the road. To finish it off, a quick dry brush of Naples yellow to bring out the highlights. That's it, a pretty convincing rock surface with no fine painting at all. Time to fill in the unpainted parts of the board. For this, I used forbidden chocolate, which is 20 parts garden dirt, 2 parts polyfiller or plaster, and one part sand. You can vary the mix to make it look more pale or rougher. It's very strong, has a nice rough finish, and best of all you don't need to paint it over again because it's already the right color. I just dropped it where I wanted it to go and used a wet brush to spread it out. You want to avoid big thick patches because those will crack while drying, but other than that, just smoosh it around. You can also paint it directly in some specific places like corners and feather it out to stain the bricks. I like this effect and I think at some point I'll want to experiment with using it as a pigment. But for now, I just had to leave this to dry. Next, I dug out the homemade static grass I made a few months ago and started gluing it on. Now, I ran into a bit of a problem. I'm used to using this on small surfaces like uh, miniature bases, but covering a large base like this is a different beast entirely. Sprinkling by hand didn't really work out and would have taken ages anyway, so I ended up using a strainer to drop grass onto the glue. Once you have an area nice and covered, shake off the excess and give it the static balloon treatment to get it to fluff up. It won't stand up as well as synthetic fiber through a static grass applicator, but it's way cheaper and still looks good. Almost done. I made a door for the cellar, which is just a part of a crafting stick carved up with some bits glued to it. The door pull is just a ring made from some very thin wire. I have an older video showing how I made the various handles, so I'll just point you to that. 
Once this was painted up, I put some uh, glue on the back and pushed it into place. To finish off, I made a couple of wooden platforms to give some more verticality to the lower part of the map. These are fairly easy to make, but if you need a hand with them, I have a whole video about them too. To glue these in, I made small holes in the wall to anchor them, as glue alone isn't going to hold them up if you put a heavy miniature on there. Once they're glued in, two final coats of gloss varnish and mud varnish and we're good to go. This was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to playing several games on this board, and since it's very asymmetric, it should provide quite a few different tactical puzzles depending on where you start from and where the objectives are. So it shouldn't get boring anytime soon. Still, since I figured out the storage problem, I think I can make a few more pieces this size, so I'll probably be doing that sooner or later. In the meantime, you can check out this playlist here. Bye!